American Literature 2. Welcome to week two. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed Emily Dickinson. It is time to move on to the next author. We're going to be entering a period called uh, regionalism and realism. So, so the very first author we're going to be reading when it comes to especially regionalism uh, is Mark Twain. Mark Twain, especially known for uh, his use of dialect in his, his literature, his, uh, his ability to really imitate through words and through the spellings of words, the way and the mannerisms of speaking of his, of his, um, of his characters. So that's something I really want you to look for as you read this week's reading. If you want to take a quick look, I'll, I'll share with you the reading for this week. It is, um, it is Mark Twain's. I want you to read his bio. First of all, find out everything you can find out about Mark Twain. I mean, this is one of the greatest writers in American history and probably one of the biggest names ever to come out of uh, American literature, especially during his time. And we're going to be reading The Notorious Jumping Frog of Calaveras County. So take a look at that, read it, and especially think about, I want you to be analyzing Mark Twain's use of humor, syntax, and dialect in function. So let's see if you can hear that. That's my dog in the background. That's why I have that's why I have this this background here. So uh, my, my, it's my office is cluttered, and then also I my my dog is here, and he enjoys. I think I think my dog is going to have an associate's degree before the end of this COVID crisis. But anyway, uh, back to what we're doing today. I want you to really think about his syntax. Now, whenever we're talking about syntax, um, it is okay. How is he actually using the 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 way of English, the English um, words, the spelling, the, the punctuation, how is he using that to imitate the way people speak? And again, this is what we call regionalism. It wasn't, uh, this is something we, we don't, we kind of take it for granted nowadays that if you are from the South, you speak in one way. And if you are from maybe uh, New Jersey, right, you're going to speak in another way. And if you're from, uh, you know, North Dakota, you're going to speak like that. Right. It will, there, there was a time before this. Right. And a lot of it has to do with the way we settled the United States. Right. The, the way that where people came from, those those accents came from those those regions. But also we started to develop our own American dialect and it started to really be something that was noticeable. And one of the first authors to really make comments on this in his writings and to really use it in a humorous way was Mark Twain. And so that's something we really want to notice, especially when we're dealing with the concept of regionalism. Also, when it comes to realism, that's another school of thought. And that is something that you'll see some in, uh, you'll see actually quite a bit in Mark Twain when it comes to realism, how, and this was, this is based off of his, his uh, work with as a journalist. And there was a, a, a school of thought that came into play especially with the invention of the camera okay so the 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 photograph was was just starting to be a thing right so so whenever we talk about mark twain we can actually look at pictures of mark twain there's even actually a recording of his voice that you can find it's it's really difficult to understand anything he's saying it's a terrible recording <laughs> really but it is a recording it is and, and this is this is just blowing people's minds at the time and it is now and only now that we can start to see the real world in art. And so in literature, people started to say, well, um, maybe we should, we should also be more realistic with the way things are. And of course, you have to think this was, we, we've never in all of history had, up to this point, right? We've never had real pictures of a battle scene. Okay, it's always been an artist rendition or some kind of a painting or a drawing or a sketch. It's never actually been an actual photograph. And now we have those. Okay, so this is a different time. This is changing the way people look at communication. It's changing the way people look at literature. It's changing the way they look at art and, and just everything in general. So we start to see a focus on the real. Let's show people the real world. It's enough of this. Enough of this, you know, flights of fancy and this dream fantasy and all these things that we've seen so far. Let's show them what it really, really is like. And can we do this in literature? Can we do this with our words? 
let's see if we can provide our readers, and this is what the, the authors of this time were starting to, to, to really try to do, let's try to provide our readers with a picture of what real life is all about, not just, you know, an artist's rendition. And so you're going to see a lot of that, and you're going to see this kind of thinking really dominate, especially for a, a certain time period. Until later on, we get we go we go off in a different direction, as 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 is the way of all art. Um, but especially during this time period, writers were trying to really convey the reality of the situation, the reality of the ways people speak in certain places and the reality of how things actually are. That is something that you're gonna start seeing, especially take a look at Twain. Uh, Twain is gonna have both, he's, he's both, both known for his regionalism and his realism. So what I want you to do is read that and have that read um, this week and make sure to finish it by Friday by midnight. And then what you're gonna do just like last week is you're going to go, let's see here, where am I here? You're going to go to our page and our, our content. You're going to go into content. And for Twain, I'd like you to write a summary of the reading. So a half a page to two pages, a summary of uh, the, the, the reading for this week. And then I want you to explicate the reading in one or two in a one or two page essay. Oh my gosh. You know what? Let me I'll make your life a little easier. I'll make your life a little easier. Let's do, let's just do an ex explication, um, let's do an explication, one or two paragraphs. You're already, hey, you're like, hey, this Professor Coomer, he, he's got it. I like this Professor Coomer. Paragraphs, okay, all I need you to do is one or two paragraphs telling me meaning. I want you to extrapolate meaning from this, this story. What does it mean? Why, you know, and, and especially think about this, when it comes to um, realism and, and when it comes to showing things the way that they actually are, maybe you can have one paragraph that discusses the dialectic aspect of the dialectical or, or essentially the way that people speak and how he represents those characters. And maybe you can have another paragraph that talks about the realities um, that maybe he's poking fun of. And maybe talk, maybe, maybe one of the paragraphs might be just be about his sense of humor, the humor that you're going to find in this particular story. It's a dry wit that, that Mark Twain has. So just give me one or two paragraphs about that, in addition to your half a page to two page summary of this particular reading. And I want, I want that to be done by Friday by midnight. And the only other thing I want you to do is go to discussions and and it looks like it looks like I'm gonna to have to maybe crack the whip a little bit. I only had one person do the discussion from last week, so so maybe I'll have to. I don't know what we'll have to do here. This is not fun for me to have to do. Hopefully, I'm, I'm always hoping that people just automatically do these things without me having to uh, force you to do these things. But please, if uh, if if you're not that one person from last week, please go back and do your discussion boards from last week. And also you're gonna do a, a, for a week two discussion. I want you to ask a question. I want you to, to tell me what is your favorite part of this particular reading or talk about um, maybe what's, what's the dumbest part? What is the funniest part? What are, you know, bring something up, make a comment, ask a question, create a thread, you know, and just, just get it done and then make comments on other people's discussion boards. If we don't do this, I may have to require us to have actual class sessions that you have to come to and you have to discuss it via Zoom. A lot of my students last semester, it was just kind of something that was kind of difficult for people to, to speak um, and to, to have a conversation. And, uh, you know, I, I would hate to have to poke you and, and prod you to, to do these, especially when it's such low hanging fruit, very, very simple and easy to make a discussion board post. So that's all you have to do. It's a super simple, easy week. Um, all, literally, once again, just going back to the syllabus, we're, we're just looking at Twain in week two, and you're going to read those things, and then you're going to go to our um, the content section, you're going to do this assignment here about Twain, and then you're going to go to discussions, 
and do fill out your week two discussion board and essentially just make a comment, make some kind of an observation, maybe quote something and then say what you think it means or why you think it's funny or what you think about it. Do it so that we don't have to get, you know, punitive or you know, weird about it, guys. All right. So let's have some fun with this. Guys, that's literally all I have for you this week. Um, make sure to do your readings, make sure to do your writings, and I will see you next week. All right. Good job. Well, do a better job. <laughs> all of you but one, do a better job. All right. Thank you. And I'll see you next week.